made me and Greg think, man, we've been wanting to do uh, this silo event forever. And, and we just couldn't think about doing it without Russell Wright. Now, Russell Wright, I've talked about him in my uh, email here. I, I wrote down, down right here. Uh, Russell is a black ops software designer who's like the S SEO version of Q, James Bond's weaponsmith. You're going to get training. You're going to see software that's going to smash down the walls of what you thought is possible. Listen, I, I met Russell. Ru Russell uh, by the way, uh, uh, before we introduce our mystery guest, uh, R Russell Wright. Russell, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you great. Uh, can we have a, a warm OMG welcome for, for Russell Wright? R Russell took not just uh, valuable time out of his schedule tonight, uh, along with our along with our mystery guest guest, not just valuable time out of his night to uh, to meet up with us. And, and Russell, can you see the uh, the question box? Yep, I, I'm looking at the question box right now. Thanks everyone for the warm welcome. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's a, and, and and these are these are some heavy hitters here. These, these these are some really exciting people that you're seeing on. Maybe maybe I'll bring some of them live so you get to meet them. A guy, I see Jimmy Kelly in there. J Jimmy's making a thousand dollars a day with affiliate stuff, another $16,000 a month with local. I see Jason Boyd. Jason's up to around $20,000 a month that he's making. Uh, lo lots of people out there having success. These are people who are you know, either just getting their start or really, really starting to cream it. And, and we've got a great audience here for you. And I'm, That's awesome, way, I, you guys. Yeah, I appreciate that, that incredibly warm welcome. And, and the thing is that I, I met Russell back in, I, I, Russell, I was trying to place it. Was it 2006, was it 2007? Do you have a beat on that? It would be 2007 when you're in San Diego. Yeah, in La Jolla, and yeah. and that's when that's when Russell introduced me to the idea of the silo. And I, I want to, I wrote this down in the uh, in the email. I don't know if you realize it, but that's like seven ice ages when it comes to, to SEO because everything just changes so fast when it comes to SEO. To, to give you to give you an idea, that was about oh well, that's I guess that's that's uh, I can't do math six years ago, and so that's. Greg, that's about four years before you you started really heavy into SEO. Yeah. Yep. So so th so this is the, the, you know Russell and, and and our mystery guests they're they're not just ahead of the curve right now. They have been so far ahead of the curve for so long, and it's it's just really extraordinary for us to have them here. They make the most dangerous software. And this is stuff that Greg and I have been. Greg, Greg, how how long have we been quietly working with with Russell? When almost before we started OMG, or right, maybe right around, or not long after? Do, do you have a, a recollection? Uh, it's been about a year because one of my best performing sites was actually done exactly the way he uh, he showed with it with the software. His, I mean, that site is ranking for stuff that I means single words. I can't say the word. It's a client site, but. I, I was looking today, and there's at least five keywords that's ranked for on the first page to get more than 100,000 exact searches a month. So that's incredible. One things. site, just one site. Yeah. yeah, and 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 so this is something you know, Russell, Russell, and our Mr. Guest have been at the cutting edge. Not just now, and it's not just a lucky thing. They've been on this. They've had the eye of the tiger for years, and so I'm so excited to introduce you to them. And and if you don't know what a silo is yet, Greg is going to introduce that to you and explain it to you a little bit better. But what I want to do now is introduce our special guest. I don't have a picture pulled up, but our, our, our special guest is an ex-military software architect on uh, on uh, eight-figure-plus projects, so like $10 million-plus projects, an enterprise software architect for the U.S. military and Department of Defense, and, uh, and David Mills uh, suspected this, and I confirmed the suspicion, that, that she does have backdoor access and secret button access that could... Uh, that could cause some problems, uh, you know, if if anybody ever really messed with her. So this is this. I got to tell you, I, I really want to have a, a super super warm OMG welcome. I, I didn't want to uh, let the cat out of the bag. We would have had total hysteria on this event if I'd let everybody know who's going to be on this event. Uh, uh, Sue, are you there? I am. Thank you so much, Mike. You're most welcome, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Can I get a warm welcome for Sue Bell, who's who's been Russell's partner in crime uh, uh, for for a long long time? And, and Sue, can you see the question box? I can. Thank you, everybody, for such a warm welcome. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a great thing. We have, again, we have we have wonderful individuals here. So what I want to do right now is I want to turn things over to um to to Greg to introduce the concept of the silo and a little bit about how it works. Uh, you, you know, just in OMG terms. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go much deeper, much more powerfully into the silo, uh, how it works, why it works, how to do it, and then Russell and Sue are gonna introduce all new technology um, 
that I, I just can't wait. I can't wait for you to see this. And the, the last thing I want to say before we get started is Russell and Sue uh, and me and Greg have put countless hours into this event. Uh, in the last week alone, me, Russell and Sue, uh, probably between the three of us, put in more than 100 hours prep for this event. Uh, and that's conservative. Uh, you know, late night Skype sessions and, and you know, working on examples for you, look, working for training. So this is a well-prepared event. We're very, very excited about it. And this is going to be the first of a series of events with, with Russell and Sue. So, so don't worry if you don't get it straight now. We will have a replay and so forth. But we're going to go inside of the deep, dark, black ops world of not just the silo, but, but some really, really crazy stuff um, when it comes to SEO. Uh, th these two are, are legit. Uh, this is a very exciting time for us. And this is something we've been waiting for a long time to share with you. So, uh, so Greg, um, do, now, do you want me to, to uh, maybe pull up something like OliviaWell.org to uh, just as an example kind of thing uh, for, for looking at a silo? What's that? Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to explain the basics because honestly, it's a little intimidating explaining uh, silos in front of Russell and Sue because I'm sure they'll pick me apart. But I'm not going <laughs> to explain the basic idea. Okay, so so here we are. We're, uh, I searched for Olivia Wilde. Now I'm logged in, but this is basically what it ranks, anyways. And there's a little bit of news today for Olivia Wilde. But anyways, we're, it looks like we're ranking around number four. We I've seen this bouncing between anywhere between number two and number five. And 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 this this, this is uh th this is the website. It's just got a few blog posts at the very beginning of it. And then if you click down, um, what we've got here is uh, uh very little uh, uh very little content. But lots and lots, uh, and in terms of like what the content is here, um, the, again, there's not a lot of it. Um, so we just have these these real shallow pages that just all they have is videos, and uh, and then some links to kind of click around, uh, like Olivia Wilde, uh, Cowboys and Aliens, and so forth. Just just little pages that just have videos uh, w with her and so forth, and and that's that's really the backbone on page of how we're ranking, Greg. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, the silo, the basic thing for that is it's like a, it's a structure of your website. And again, I'm just going to cover the very, very basic because I know Sue and uh, Russell will go deep into it. But what they, I mean, what they taught me basically is it's the structure of your website where you want to structure a website from uh, like the most competitive topics all the way down to the least competitive. And then you can search by that from, from the, comp the amount of competition. And from what I understand, there's different types of silos, and they can probably explain that. The one I'm most familiar with is when you have silo levels. So you have silo, and then you have uh, the sub subcategory of the silo. So, for example, if you have a health site and you want to talk about weight loss, weight loss would be your silo, and then you would have subcategories of weight loss. You can also go into supporting categories of those subcategories. But it's basically a structure of your website, and when you have the proper structure in place, as I'm saying with you know some of these sites I set up with, the way they show me, you just get incredible power from it. All right, great. Um, so, so that's the basic idea. And, and what Greg let you know is that, that he has one site that he set up th this way, and it, and it ranked pretty quickly. Is, is that correct, Greg? Yeah, it took it took about a month to pick up steam, but after that, it just started killing him. Even now, even today, it, it just picks up every day. Like each time I throw a link at it, it just spreads throughout the site so much more than it normally would for like another site. So it, it, there's no doubt about it. it's working like crazy. Yeah, and, and, and f five single word keywords in, in the health market. These are some of the hardest to rank for because I know what Greg's talking about. These are some of the hardest to rank for keywords in the world. These are real panic keywords that um, that are getting 100,000 or more exact match searches a month. Um, the, the value of this site uh, in, in terms of what the pay-per-click value would be is so off the charts. So this is a very, very powerful, very competitive stuff. And, and we're going to show you how to do it extremely cheap tonight. So now, uh, Sue and, uh, Sue and Russell, um, are, are you guys ready to, to take, to, to take the helm of the ship and, and to guide us and may, maybe even become presenters and, and start walking us through the basic lessons of what a silo is, you know, what people should know about it and, and how, how we can get started with this. And then from there, we'll move on to the software. And, and and I'm excited for them to come on, Mike, because a lot of people have talked about silos lately, and I've done silos a lot of different ways, and the way that Russell and Sue taught me is is killing everything else. So, Well, also, um, this is Russell. Um, so I just wanted to say you don't have to worry about perfection, Greg, because there are actually about, since we launched in 2005 or six, about 100 different variations and interpretations of website silo architecture, yeah. uh, starting from the original uh, data hierarchy process um, pretty much 
pitched and talked about originally by my mentor, Bruce Clay, who I studied formally with in 2006 and 7. And later on, when, of course, I, my first really big client, my first really large corporate client I landed was Biz Filings. And at the time, they were trying to rank for about 50 to 60,000 keywords simultaneously. And at that point, I knew that I was over my head. And Sue and I went to the same church. So, you know, that's how I met her. So we started working uh, together on this. And basically, uh, since this was the biggest client that I ever had, imagine some of you with the first client that you have, and then all of a sudden you got a $30,000 contract, right? You knew it was slightly over your head, but, you know, I had Sue as a friend and partner to, like, say, hey, it's not that big of a deal because she's got this, like, military industrial background with data hierarchy, right? Not a problem. And she looked at my little word tracker spreadsheet and the three little keyword tools that were popular <laughs> at the time and said, Let's pull these into one data hierarchy and do an LSI analysis and create a, you know, <laughs> a whole thing. And, you know, on top of that, I had gotten back from uh, Bruce Clay's course where website silo architecture and the theory of semantic relevance and theme clustering were just getting started back then. It was just very, very new. In fact, during the early, early Bruce Clay events, you know, which was $3,000, $4,000 ahead at the time, uh, that was the, the biggest stumbling block for everyone at those events. In fact, it took, took up an entire day and a half and still people were walking out of the room with dazed and confused looks on their faces and Bruce just said, you know what, we're moving on. Just do the best you can. Greg, so like it's not, I've seen your sites, they're fine. There's different ways. The big issue is getting into the really stacked sites for ranking for super competitive terms and Sue had helped me that with that and she still has to help me today when we have sites for monster clients. Okay, so it's not if you get an e-commerce or a giant shopping cart, you've got to get some help. I mean, it takes two people to back engineer and restructure sites like that. So the way that story went is with that first client, Sue and I sat down and said, you know what? That's why you need a computer. So we built, we built themes in 1.0. <laughs> because at that time, you know, the stuff was fairly trivial for her. But for me, you know, she realized that I needed a software application because I was pulling in Word Tracker and five different keyword tools to try to get data to be congruent and import them into a website automatically, right? And, you know, I was like, that's impossible. And she's like, no, it's not. What are you talking about? And that's how themes, that's how our main company was born, which we'll talk more about later on. But the, what we were going to show everyone today, um, Sue is going to drive because the, it's just better for her to drive. Okay, so yeah, Sue, so. Sue, would you like me to, to hand you over the um, the, sure. the okay, great, and and just to make to kind of simplify um, uh, things, you know, the, the basic idea behind uh, this this website uh, silo architecture is that this is going to be a way that we're going to set up our websites and our blogs, and it's it's actually at the end of the day going to make things much much easier. It's going to make it much easier for uh, for us to rank, and it's actually going to make things much easier for uh, for our customers to click around on our sites. And, and of course, they've got great, great graphics here. So, uh, so Sue, yeah. please take it away. And one thing I would add, Sue, is that um, the only thing that you need to realize about website style architecture is that it helps you rank. You know, it's cheaper by the dozen. If you just remember those simple sentences, cheaper by the dozen, it helps you rank higher for thousands of keywords or poten hundreds, potentially thousands of keywords, using up to 90% fewer inbound links than your competition. I'll just repeat that because if you remember nothing else that I say today, it's just like, you know, whatever, like two geekdom or whatever, it's really just that. If you have a proper internal website structure, Google understands that you're talking about what you say you're talking about and gives it extra co-occurrence power and you just rank higher for fewer inbound links. Does that make sense, everyone? If that makes sense, uh, just, you know, maybe chime in and let us know because I don't want to, you know, keep, create more so complications. Yeah, yeah, give us the, we'll give, give us exactly the number. How to set this up. Yeah, give us the number one if, if this is making sense to you. And and if, if it's not making sense to you, give us the number two and just give me a quick word or two as to why. Okay, it really looks like people are getting it, which I'm a little bit surprised, I gotta say. Um, okay, excellent, excellent. Yeah, actually I got like one, two. Okay, well, uh, for the people that are having a little bit of trouble, um, one of the things that we can do is we can try to answer your questions a little bit as, as we go. And, okay, uh, cool. Uh, so anyways, but, but it looks like, like we had like a, a large percentage and then I'll try to answer questions in the, in the question box. All right. Okay. So back in the day, the idea that we had was to take this whole silo structure concept and make it easy because back in 2006, we were working a lot more with HTML sites. Blogs were still on the horizon and 
one of the most complicated things to do was to get the actual linking structure correct. So the idea behind a silo, as you can see sort of here on the screen, we've got this uh, a little bit fleshed out, this blueprint, we'll flesh it out a little bit more. But each one of these things is a silo. So all of these pages are going to link together, and when several pages link together that are thematically related, it lets the search engine know that, hey, all of these pages are about this particular theme. So all of these pages are about web design. All of these pages are about internet marketing. And when your on-site linking structure takes away the clutter, then you have two things that happen. First of all, the search engines understand what it is that you're trying to rank for, and people understand where it is they need to go to find the information that they need. So Google rewards you and gives you higher rankings. All right, so we use, um, we use a couple of different things, but today I'm going to demonstrate Kraken, which, shows, which uh, is a really easy way you can do market research, market analysis in the vertical online market analysis area, and then you can come here to the blueprints, you take your best ideas after you've done your research, you come here and you create a blueprint out of it. And um, Russell, did you want to get into a little bit more, adding some more things like under search engine optimization? Well, again, the way that Mike and I had worked it out is we have several softwares and, and Mike's kind of leading how things are going to get rolled out. The Kraken is kind of interesting because this is an automatic blueprint, everyone. In other words, you, you pick the primary site of landing pages based on the total search market value, which simply means how much money was being spent on a keyword in a total year on Google pay-per-click AdWords combined with the amount of traffic that it gets to the top five rankings on Google. So Kraken automatically picks the keywords for you and the relationship of the child keywords as articles. Okay. And Russell, so, someone had a I'm sorry, someone had a good question. They said, why is there internet marketing Nashville and then Nashville Internet Marketing being so because, similar? Because we randomly because Mike asked us to create a, a website uh, blueprint that we weren't really sure what was being sold. And so we paid no attention to the products. We just quickly, in probably five minutes or less, selected some silo landing pages based on keywords that had high cost and traffic. Okay. And again, we flesh this out in much more advanced courses, but the bottom line is this is really almost like an auto type scenario because if this is, these keywords would all be changed to copywriting headlines, right? And they will in other be. Words, yeah, they will be. When they get to your blog, you, you don't just run a blog and say Nashville Advertising as the title, right, of the, of the page or post. Yeah. You say five tips for cheaper Nashville advertising, right? And so we teach all that in a large framework and process of execution. But for this case, these keywords right here, before they're involved in persuasion architecture, conversion, there are the keywords that have the highest dollar amounts over the course of a one-year period on the entire internet related to the Nashville SEO term. Okay, so again, the, this example is not based on product. We didn't know what we were selling. We didn't know <laughs> what the site was for. It was a demo to show everybody. I mean, I'm assuming we're selling a Nashville SEO. And if we're selling Nashville SEO, all of these terms have a co-occurrence of 2% or greater to the Nashville SEO org. So you might delete them or keep the ones you want. In fact, if you don't have a product related to a term, you might blow it away, right? Okay. So this is not, we used, we have another software, which we'll talk about another time. Uh, Mike was going to talk about that another time, which will help you choose what's specific to your products. But this is a quick and dirty kind of yeah, blueprint. Yeah, to, to let everyone know, Nashville SEO is a site. Uh, um, me and David Mills just moved to Nashville. And it's a site that we're going to be developing uh, for uh, uh, for OMGers and for NHBers to help you better understand uh, how how we do uh, local client consulting um, and how to how to integrate some stuff like uh, how to integrate, uh, for example, web design and get more clients using web design and, and uh, up your up your prices using web design and how to uh, get advertising right. clients and, and yeah. So and here's forth. an and here's an important thing to remember about Kraken, you guys, is that Kraken says that Nashville SEO is not challenging and therefore not qualified to use Kraken for. In other words, it's not a vertical market. It's only a theme or a micro niche. That's how small the tra I mean, there's plenty of traffic in that industry, but it's not really big enough to use Kraken. So we have other tools. So we stretched it to use it anyways, and you can see we have articles. So we threw some stuff in here to show you uh, how a general one-layer silo blueprint we didn't want to overwhelm you with our other software that we're actually private labeling for Mike and Dave and Greg uh, that actually goes three layers deep because we knew that would blow your mind today. So we're starting simpler 
with just the two-layer Kraken blueprint. Okay, so it's not the focus. The focus is really on the silo plugin. And, and, and the one question I think that we're getting from, from folks here, I, I think that people get it, um, but, but, but if we can just, uh, j just, do, just to do one thing, um, I think that it's, it's worthwhile for people to understand why it is like really clearly have a clear picture of what uh, maybe a, a traditional like one or two tier silo looks like and and just why it is like 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 what what what's happening both in terms of Google visiting that website and uh, and in terms of what happens when um, when visitors visit that site and, and why it's kind of uh, uh, kind of superior in that in those respects. Okay. So, yeah, and, and again, that, that, that's uh, just throwing things a little bit out there. I'm trying to think sure. um, if we've got a, a good site to show this off. It's uh, Greg, would it be worthwhile for us to show like New Orleans interior designs, or, or maybe um, maybe we'd show off uh, healthy tips or something like that? Or, or uh, what, what are your thoughts? Um, for those, we actually didn't set up the the URL structure the way I wanted to. Yeah. Um, the the only ones I have set up are the our client sites okay. that I actually set up with their software. So. Okay. All right. What I'll do, let me just pull, I'll pull things back to me just for, just for a second. And I'll, okay. I'll explain, I'll explain how I did this with, um, I'll explain how I did this. Cause I, I just want to do this a little bit before we get into software. Cause otherwise okay. it's a little bit confusing. So I'll show okay. my screen. So here, all right. So, so I'm on, a, I'm on oliviawild.org. And again, this, this site is ranking for just a monstrously competitive uh, keyword, just in terms of how many searches and how much money there is in this. So if I go to the Google keyword tool, which is uh, fast on its way out. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that towards the end of the event. But anyways, uh, if I go to the Google keyword tool and we type in uh, Olivia Wilde, and then I break capture here, then, um, then you see a term that's getting a, a million broad match searches and 550,000 exact matches. And this is gonna tell us two things, number one, is that if we can rank for this word Olivia Wilde, we're going to get an enormous amount of traffic. But also, these, there's a lot of information in this broad match here, and this is one of the reasons uh, uh, OliviaWilde.org is, is actually a second site that Russell and Sue are helping us silo out even deeper, even, even further than we have now. Uh, because again, there's another 450,000 uh, broad match searches out there, words like Olivia Wilde uh, boyfriend and Olivia Wilde married and Olivia Wilde dating and, and all these kinds of searches, uh, Olivia Wilde images and, and uh, you know, search, searches that we can pick up on. And uh, uh, by the way, to quickly explain how it is that we make money on this site, we're either trying to get people uh, over to, uh, we're trying to get guys over to dating offers and girls over to weight loss offers. And, and that, that's, that's what we're doing generally with this site. So, um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you how the silo is set up on this site. So right here with this blog post where it says Olivia Wilde blog, I've got two links, Olivia Wilde Twitter and Olivia Wilde IMDB. Okay, so these are two, um, two links. And when I click on Olivia Wilde IMDB, it's gonna take you to some of Olivia Wilde's movies. Okay, so uh, for example, and some, some of the things from her career, like when she was like on the OC or when she was in the movie Cowboys and Aliens. So at the root level, uh, 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 at the root level, and again, this isn't exactly set up perfectly, but at the root level, uh, we, we have these categories like uh, Olivia Wilde Twitter will be about things like about her personal life. Uh, and then Olivia Wilde IMDB uh, is more things about, uh, you know, her, her career and so forth. So uh, this has a link down from here to Olivia Wilde Boyfriend. So there's no link from the homepage to Olivia Wilde Boyfriend. You have to click on uh, Olivia Wilde Twitter, and then you can go to Olivia Wilde Boyfriend and again, this is very shallow content. As you can see, it's not like I've written article after article on this. But but what that's letting us do is it's letting Google, uh, Google is moving around on this website and visitors are able to move around on this website. And it's organizing things for people. You know, if you just went to YouTube, for example, and we just type in Olivia Wilde, uh, which is uh, you know where people would often want to go, if they just type in Olivia Wilde, then it's really disorganized, right? Like there's, you know, she's on a TV show here. Uh, you know, this is a, a clip from a movie. It's just not very organized. And even if I type in Olivia Wilde boyfriend, then then even then it's not but so well organized, 
okay? A lot of these are just broad-based Olivia Wilde stuff and so forth. So on our website here, we have it organized. We have a page that's that's specifically about Olivia Wilde. You know, who's her boyfriend? Is she dating J Jake Gyllenhaal or, or is she dating Justin Timberlake or whatever? And, it, and it's well organized for people. And again, you may not care about Olivia Wilde. I certainly didn't care about Olivia Wilde when Greg first registered this website. But then, but then what we're doing is we're helping people understand by organizing that website and, and that tower. Oh. Sorry, was that, are you playing a video? Somebody, okay, well anyways. Right yeah, on. I actually had something pop up, sorry about that. Okay, so, so what, what we're doing with this site is, is we're, we're, we're really, like really organizing things. And then for, for visitors, visitors are able to then search the site and then it's pretty fun for them because then if they want to find out about her boyfriend, they go here. If they want to find out about her GQ uh, shot, then they go here. And they, you know, they can see videos of her GQ shot. Uh, of, of, her, uh, of her GQ photo shot and so, uh, shot and so forth. And so, and so that's what's going on now. What happened though, and I realized this when I did, I did this silo by hand, okay? I did this myself. Um, and even though there's not a lot of content, honestly, it was a lot of work, okay? It was just a lot of work uh, manually siloing this out. And so one of the things that I wanted you to have is the option not just to see how it is a silo works and how it is that we structure it, but also software that'll help you uh, move that process along. So is, is that something, that, Sue, that you could show, like how, how you might like automate this kind of process? Absolutely. All right, great. And there's a couple levels of automation. So I'm gonna pass things back over to Sue. Okay. So. So let's just start with that because that's a really good example. So let's just um, let's create a silo manually just so that you can see how this works. Let's do Olivia Wild as the silo, as the first silo. And I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to add some things underneath it. And I'm adding these just straight vanilla right at the moment. So if we do. Olivia Wild Twitter. And, and so since Olivia Wild is our domain name, does uh -huh. that first silo start at like the domain level or do we actually create like a another like a URL for that, would you say? Well, typically your silo keyword should be one of the really important keywords on your website that you want to rank for. It gets um, a lot of link juice from all of the other pages on the site. So your most competitive terms go in there. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yeah, but since this is an EMD, you know, it's going to rank for the EMD, you know, the home page the best. You can't really put a silo at the the home page URL, can you? It has to be like a an inner URL. No, your your silos come underneath the home page. Right. Okay. So in this case we've got the home page right up here and I'm creating an Olivia Wild silo. Gotcha. And so then now I'm creating a couple of pages under that. And you had Twitter, and what was the other page that you had, the other silo on your site? It, uh, I think it was, it was Olivia Wild Boobs. Uh, that's funny, Russell. <laughs> that is that is a search term that gets like 2,500 exact match searches. It's not my fault. Um, so it's uh, um, uh, so they had like Olivia Wild IMDb, and this is you know this is celebrity world. Like I had no idea about this, but I, again now we're now we're dominating, and it's pretty funny. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'm going to add those two things underneath that. And let's just take a look at the settings I, here. I would, I would also, Sue, also want to address what Greg was saying is that, uh, Greg, that's the right thinking. Um, you know, your, your exact match dom domain is going to serve to reinforce Olivia Wilde. Like, we may or may not have Olivia Wilde on the menu bar. In other words, we might give it another title or something like that or another headline. Okay. Might be Olivia Wilde information. Might be gotcha. Olivia Wilde uh, mega site. Who knows? But we try to keep it. Uh, in the greater than a million, uh, you know, we, we really want it to be all the phrase match to be really high traffic and really, really high cost if possible. So we just down, step down from there. Hey, that's the one thing I always had a problem with the silo and was an EMD. So because it's like, do you target the home page or do you target the, the silo? You know what I mean? Right. It's going I after do. that. So. Yeah, I get you. And there, there's no reason why you can't have a silo that's the same thing as the, the home page. Um, right. 
Absolutely. And, you know, you just then you, the persuasion architecture will be different based on what the market wants. As long as you have the keyword, it doesn't matter so much. It's just serving to reinforce the theme that Google is, is verifying that you're talking about. Especially with the changes going on now, it seems like it would oh, help yeah. you rank for the homepage anyway. So. Yes, yes. And we've, all, we've talked about since 2008 of what's called pure diverse, meaning don't always just use Olivia Wilde this and that. Like if she's got a different name, use it, you know. Now it's hard with celebrities and names and brands. You can't really do that. But if, you know, right. you want to include synonyms in as well, and Google will tell you what those are. So. Cool. Okay, so we've got our first silo here. You can see the structure is building out here, and it matches over here on the site. We've got Olivia Wilde. When you click down into the Olivia Wilde silo, then you can see the other pages that we've got underneath that. Now right now it's boring. We don't have anything on the pages, but we'll fix that in a minute. All right, so yeah, I just want to also add to everybody that it is incredibly a huge pain in the butt to do what we just did in four seconds manually. I mean, yeah, <laughs> for me, any, any, it takes three, how, how, how many three people, plugins yeah, a bunch of time. How, how many people watch? Uh, I, I created some videos during during our Omega uh, event with Becker, and I created a number of videos showing me like siloing out OliviaWild.org. Uh, uh, give me the number one if if you saw those videos. And, and also just give me a note if you did see the videos, if it looked like it was like basically like like quite a decent amount of work. Ha, that's funny. Jeff Green said it was brutal. That's funny. <laughs> also, I wanted to address Mike Gary saying, why are we doing Olivia Wilde on a Nashville site? Great question. I want to clear it up. We would never publish this site live. We're going to actually install the Nashville blueprint and get rid of Olivia when we're done. This is demo purposes yeah. only. The site yeah. should say Olivia Wilde or whatever, Olivia Wilde Factor Fiction or whatever. Okay. Yeah, and right, and right now we're, what we're doing, uh, we kind of slid it underneath uh, people's radar. I, I got a question from Krister, Kristen. This is actually an all-new software. It is, it has never been before uh, available before tonight. Um, and and this is a software because one of my pain points. It was funny because I was talking to Russell about this. Um, it was right after I had built out OliviaWild.org, and I was like, that was crazy. That was very difficult. And and, and Russell said, well, I'll tell you what, let, you know. Let me go back to the weapons lab. Like I said, it's like Q on James Bond, you know. Like let me let me <laughs> let me and Sue go, go back in there, and, and you know we'll we'll, we'll put our ego, evil geniuses' minds together, and they actually have another couple of evil geniuses. They work together, Matt to Cruz, and uh, they work with Kelly as well. And and uh, they, w what's Kelly's last name? Reynolds. Reynolds and Kelly Reynolds. Sorry about that. I, I knew it was Kelly. Uh, but I, I remember his last name. So uh, so this is really really neat what they've been able to do. Uh, uh, I'm, you know, this because this is really cool because you're both seeing um, the the how to do it, but you're also seeing the automation of it at the same time because these menus and pulling the videos in and all this stuff is just such a pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah, and and everyone, what she's doing now is pretty powerful. <laughs> this plugin, we've given you the benefit um, using the YouTube API, 100% friendly to be able to pull in both videos from YouTube with the keyword matching in your silo structure as well as the video description if you want it. And you can also pull the same comments uh, from that. We get a lot of questions about dupe content and all that. And I can only say this before we even get the flurry of questions coming down the queue here, is that I have tested over, soon I've probably tested somewhere in the umpteen million videos online. We're publishing tens of thousands per month. There has never been any evidence whatsoever that dupe content is in play with YouTube. And the issue is probably and primarily because YouTube is, I call it GooTube. I mean, Google and YouTube are the same. And the engagement rate on YouTube is up so high that even Google is surprised. Yeah. Right? Meaning, yeah. Re remember that, that Google owns YouTube. And YouTube is the single biggest advantage that Google has. It's the one place where they have right. an absolute unchallenged monopoly in the marketplace. And Precisely. people going to YouTube videos gives uh, gives Google an enormous amount of money. So when people go off to Facebook, Google loses money. When people go to YouTube, Google makes an enormous amount of money. And give me the number one if that makes sense. That that when that when Google sends visitors to YouTube, that Google makes money. And and like, could, would somebody type in like like a, in a single word answer? What is Google's real purpose in things like 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 what is you know with larry and sergey what do they uh, and there's actually one word i'm looking for forget a lot of people are uh, uh, yep uh, that's close that's close but there's yes yeah, somebody said do no evil yeah right <laughs> <laughs> there, all right there, 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 there's there's a, there's a one letter there's a one, one word uh 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 begins with the letter g you guys are getting close 
What, what's the word? <laughs> I want a bunch of people to say it at the same time. Noel says power. That's close. There we go. Now we got a lot of people tying it. Greed, greed, greed. Somebody said God. <laughs> Google eyes. No, it's greed. It's greed. They're greedy. They want money. They, you know, they, yeah. they want they private also- chefs, satellites. They want airplanes. They just want money. Somebody said G spot. Shame on you, Marco. That's funny. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they also got the military contract as well, which so you can talk about some other time, and that's important for everybody. Yes. So, so, so the thing is, you, YouTube is giving us this enormous, enormous power to rank. Um, you know, a, a lot of people know that, that Greg, uh, Greg recently uh, you j- just made uh, nine hundred thousand dollars worth of sales, and and Greg, that was all YouTube. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. All YouTube videos. Nine hundred thousand dollars in sales of YouTube videos. Okay, so it's not just that Google wants to rank them, customer, and that's the clients. Is that correct, Greg? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so so I, so I'm trying, just trying to like, we're just trying to cross some real powerful things here. We're crossing both the power of silos and the power of YouTube and the power of automation. One of the things that that uh, that Russell just really underscored here is that dupe content is such a lower issue when it comes, like it's essentially a non-issue. Okay, it's one of the reasons why we can just do crazy stuff like fire SC nuke links to a YouTube video and it's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, exactly. it, it just doesn't matter. So, so, so this is really, really uh, so funny. Dan, Danny Bull says uh, Morrison too. That's great. Okay, great. Uh, uh, go ahead. We got a really good question about the URL structure. Uh, Sue and Russell, yeah. they're saying like for oliviawill.org, how would you set it up like the, the Olivia Will Twitter first, for example, would it be oliviawill.org slash Olivia Will slash Olivia Will Twitter? Now that, I think that would be too much, but I would, I would leave that question to you guys. You know, um, I haven't ever had any problems repeating the keywords in the URL string. I probably wouldn't repeat it more than twice. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. And also there there used to be, and Sue and I dealt with this a lot in the early 2000s, there used to be a bit of an issue with the length of the overall domain. Like you don't want something that's, you know, Olivia Wilde Twitter I am, you know, gigantic, like yeah. the domain being huge and then yeah. the folders being huge. There is, of course, processing time, and Google has getting faster and faster. So you want to keep it simple enough to remember for users, but also make sure that you have the keywords that have the highest. When you look up at that URL string, I want everybody in this call eventually to start looking at their URL string and going, how much money is that word string worth? Exactly. How, many, how much money is being bid on on those word strings? And there are times when you might have domains that don't have phrase match keywords yeah. and so on and so forth. But the point is that the structure of what's important and what you want ranked, the, the order in which things should be ranked should be your domain, exact, like Greg was saying, exact mesh domain, and then the next folder and the next one. So that's they're supporting each other to rank easier with fewer inbound links. Hopefully that makes sense. And I, I want to ask a, a quick question. Now, I, I, there's no doubt every single person on this event, me and Greg included, has had a number of things fly over our head, and that's okay. Okay, I want you to know that straight from the beginning. Have you at least gotten one aha moment during this event. We're about 45 minutes into the event. Has this been valuable so far? Give me the number one. Uh, and, and remember, Russell and Sue can, can, can see your answers. You know, you just want to make sure that, that, that it's valuable for you and valuable for your time. Huh. Can, can you guys see that, that, that nobody has written the number one except for hundreds of people? <laughs> I see a couple of confused people, and I also, but I see tons of very, very, and everybody else, I promise that once you see it, you have to learn this by doing it. Once you do it a few times, absolutely, it's very, very, you know, it took me, I mean, to cut you a break, it took me four years with Sue, you know, beat me up every day and starting a company with me and putting through boot camp for four years to fully understand this. Yeah, and, so and we're going to have some people, bad. yeah, we're going to have some people, <laughs> like, like Julie said, it's a bit overwhelming. That's absolutely okay. And one of the things I want to remind you of is something that, that David Mills put out there in, in the, um, uh, uh, along with Greg in the in the original OMG shortcut, and it's in the Endgame, uh, Endgame shortcut uh, video book, is that com- remember the confusion is the feeling of your brain getting stronger and getting more powerful. It's, it's, it's re- literally the feeling of your brain ripping open to create new neural pathways for you to get smarter. And so confusion is a good thing. Uh, you know, of course, we don't want you to f- like wind up feeling bad, but, but feeling of confusion is literally a good thing. It, it means that you're racing ahead with things. So I, I hope that every single person on this event is feeling some dr- degree of con- con- uh, confusion. Um, and, and, yeah, and I'm, Go ahead. Mm-hmm. I, actually, I actually feel pretty concerned because you don't have to understand jack about website cell architecture because of this plugin that Sue built. 
Oh, that's and funny. And that's what's so scary. I mean, I, it's actually kind of concerning. We actually we had to decide whether we release this because, you know, we hold fifteen thousand dollar events and so on and so forth. And one of the things we get to hold over our head is like, oh, this is so complicated, and you know, you're building, <laughs> you know, and this and that. Now it's like, okay, gosh, if I'd had this five years ago. I'd be like, so I don't have to understand it. Just put in the word you want, write the great copy, and stick the, you know, the title. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what. Something that I'm, that, that I'm going to do um, for, for anybody on this event who I, I'm just going to do something special um, because, I, you know, we, we obviously have this, this wonderful software that we're demoing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put those videos uh, uh, as a part of the replay that, that you can either watch or download of me building out Olivia Wilde manually. So first of all, so you can see how I did it, okay? And that'll be valuable for you. And it'll be fun and, and you know, it, it was a fun process and so forth and I talked through it. But also so you can see that, that it was a lot of work for me as well. So so hopefully that will th that, that will help. So anybody who feels like, you know, I, I wanna see it done once, you know, just kind of slow, just, you know, just me and Mike sitting down and you can just watch over my shoulder. I will show you how to do that. But I wanna, what I wanna do is help eliminate uh, any feelings of fear or worry so we can just zoom in on this event. We have just such good feelings uh, uh, going forward on this event. So I'll make that live uh, along with your replay for this event. All right, uh, uh, soon, Russell, uh, please carry on. Okay, so... I'm gonna get your way, Sue. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no okay. worries. So the next silo I wanna do is diet plans. And um, I turned the videos on, I adjusted the videos while Mike was talking, and we'll sh I'll show you what the result of that is here in a minute. But I'm gonna add this as, as a silo, and then if you guys would give me some feedback what your favorite diet plans are, We'll add a few things here under diet plans. I got one paleo diet. That's what I'm there on there. That's what I do, Greg. No. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I love it, man. It's, we, we, we have somebody said all beer. <laughs> all beer. <laughs> <laughs> I like Sue. I like the chocolate drink cookie, the cookie diet, of course, as we know. All right, we've got uh, Sumari says portion control. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Emma says juicing. It's a good one. We actually Joe, Joe Marfoli also said juicing. Um, so I forgot diet on the beer diet. Oh, beer diet. Um, oh, that's funny. Al Albert Corey says seafood, like S-E-E food. <laughs> Actually, we had two people. Jason Boyd said it at the same time. We had three people. We have a lot of people saying seafood diet. I don't know where that came from. That's really funny. Uh, okay. Someone said Atkins. Right. Someone said Atkins. Atkins is good. Let's do that one. Okay, great. And then that's probably we'll enough. Says, yeah. Okay. Sure. But Sue, you didn't add diet to beer. Did you mean to write beer by itself? I mean, just go. Yeah, up I did. I don't think there's actually a beer diet. So <laughs> yeah, so I'm make just... one. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty right. broad. Beer is pretty and it, broad. But, but by the way, just you know, I, I've asked the audience if they're having fun. Sue and Russell, are you having fun with this audience? You, you see, Absolutely. like, the, the, uh, OMGs are killer, right? Like, you just see, like, they just really responsive. It's really wonderful for yeah, me and Greg being on this event. Yeah, you guys are right. So one of the things that, one of the reasons I went off on this crazy tangent, we've got Olivia and we've got diet, is that you can combine crazy topics together on one site. And because they're siloed, Google is going to know these pages are about diet plans, these pages are about Olivia, and you can get ranked from all of these different concepts on one single site. It happens all the time for us. And I also want to say that that really, when you're thinking in that mindset, that's not a mini site or a micro site anymore, you guys. That's what you call an authority site. I mean, we have sites that are thousands of pages with, you know, dozens upon dozens of silos, and they don't seem related from an from a exact Mac do, match domain location. So we don't want to blow you guys out because that's an authority site. It's huge. But we just wanted yes. to point that out. I see a lot of people doing this. Like they'll have like review sites, and they'll they'll like silo it out. Like okay, these are like the health stuff. This is like the you know the animal stuff, and they'll silo it out that way. So. Yeah, exactly. And you can actually create an authority site in about 20 minutes with this plugin, and That's steep it and steep it as a you know sitting around with those YouTube videos because they're indexed so quickly with the sitemap stuff I showed you, Greg. Um, then like we have them indexed in like two days, and the whole authority site is just nuts. That's ridiculous. Okay. Okay, so I want to come back here to the YouTube content for a second and just show you what it is that I've done. You see I've put in some static text here, check this video, and think about a short code here. By default, the thing that's here is embed HTML, that gets you your video. You can leave it at that, you don't have to do anything more creative, but you can. All right, so when, when you put in these additional things, then what happens is I've got the title of my page, which is diet plans, I've got check out this video, which is what I had in what I put in text here. We've got the video itself, and then we've got think about a short code here. Great place to put a banner, so if you've got some kind of a banner rotator that you can stick in your short code, and, and, uh, or you, know, you can get all kinds of creative there. 
All right, so that, that's just what I'm trying to like um, give you an example of what it is you can do. Okay, so this is diet plans. Let's go take a look at the paleo diet. We've got a, a video on the paleo diet. You can see we've got, think about the short code here, check out this video. So you can see how that static text is going to be the same on every single page. This video, they had um, some comments. So it's got, it's an, an incredibly long page, but then and, yeah, paleo is really popular. And notice, notice everyone, the URL structure. Uh, remember I told you guys to set that up manually and how long it took. Ooh, yeah, totally, man. I, I get diet it. Plans and paleo diet. But, exactly. but sadly, this video that it shows kind of de tries to debunk the paleo diet. But that's okay. You can always um, you can, switch you the can, videos. Yeah, exactly. So you can come in here. We can edit this page, and instead of paleo diet, we can say you know paleo diet mm -hmm. controversially. Exactly. That's persuasion architecture, you guys. The technical stuff we've gone over is okay, but at the end of the day. As Mike will tell you, I mean, because he's my teacher in this area of persuasion, you still have to write awesome headlines and you still have to write awesome, compelling videos, you know, headlines and descriptions. So you got to change that. To add on okay. that, Russ, I'm finding if your URL matches your title, you're not ranking as well anyway. So. Yep, exactly. So you can come in here and you can switch out that video if you want to. Um, I'm in the visual side, so we can come back here to, to, I mean, I'm in the text side, you come back here and you can, you can modify any of this. Your comments, the comments that showed up on that page are actually part of the comments. Um, uh, if we show comments here, then they'll show up down the bottom. Um, and we can update that page and take a look at the page and you can see we've got paleo diet controversial the best diet updates your your link over here on the side and you can see here we've only got diets we're only talking about diets in here no matter where we go no matter which page we're on notice how I skipped over that beer diet page right <laughs> so um, so that's how it works in manual mode okay you guys ready to take this to the next level? Have I left anybody in confusion still? Do we have questions we need to answer? You're saying right. there's, a next, there's a next level to this? There is a next level to this. All yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got this. We've covered settings. We've talked about manual silo builder. Now we're ready for the silo importer. All right. So if I come over here to Kraken and I do an export on this bad boy, and we're going to export the blog XML. Oops, I needed to click in the save. Right Sorry click, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, we're fixing that, by the one way. One things I want to <laughs> do is get one of the things I want to do is give everyone a rough idea of of the work that the, the you know quote unquote work that went into creating this. Um, the, now we did spend uh, hours and hours and hours crafting uh, these lessons and and really coming up with our game plan for teaching this event because we wanted things to just be crystal clear for you, give you the best examples, make it a lot of fun for you, but. This one part that we're getting to right now, in terms of the actual uh, man hours that went into creating the, the blueprint you're looking at, the, I would say it was the easiest part. Uh, Russell, it was a total of, I mean, it was like 20 mouse clicks. Yeah, I mean, I, or so. Uh, I, best, best, yeah. yeah. I, I just want to kind of give that, I mean, maybe at the end of the event, we'll get to kind of demo <laughs> that uh, how Kraken actually works, because I think it's pretty exciting. Sure. I want Greg to see it as well. So we're, we're a little yeah. bit fast forwarding past something that's actually a simple part of the process, but in the actual creation of this blueprint is is almost disturbingly simple. Yeah, and uh, again, do, do, that, you, do you all ever feel guilty about that? By the way, Russell. Sir? <laughs> no, I mean you guys you know, have to understand that Kraken was you know that's an enterprise like an agency tool. Most of our agents from large agencies in the U.S. that use it. Uh, they, they've been trained at certification events and they don't really want to help us market or become affiliates or anything like that. That's how powerful it is. They don't yeah. want anybody else to know about it. So, but again, there is training required, um, but not for the blueprint. The blueprint's just set and forget. Just make sure that the first keyword you put in is really, really, really what you want to drill into because you click and you walk away, you go to dinner in a movie, have coffee, come back, and there's like 10 silos all drilled out with the most profitable keywords and the article keywords contained within them over an hour. It's done. <laughs> I mean, it's nuts. It really is crazy. So that is why, you know, you, we offer a variety of different tools to import into this plugin because, you know, everybody has different needs. Exactly. All right. So we've got a couple of options here. I can set this so that these things are going to come in automatically as draft, or we can go ahead and publish them live. 
if you think you want to make updates to it after you do the import, then you want to set it to draft. But just for the effect, I'm going to show you what Publishing Them Live is. Um, the short codes have the option to give you contextual links actually on the page. For right now, I'm going to leave those off. And I'm going to add the YouTube videos, okay? So what I'm going to import is this entire blueprint that we've got represented here in this grid, all right? import. Now, we can kick back, we can open a beer, and if we're lucky, we might even get it poured. <laughs> oh, ice and ball. Ooh, okay, that'll take so, away the rest of the webinar. Yeah, I know that's your favorite. Okay, so... Um, All right, and... As you can see, we now have an incredibly huge blueprint. If we come back here to the home page, and so just to like clear it up for people, this was just like a quick example. You didn't go into detail about like what was in each silo. This is just for example, correct? Right. So, so what's in each silo is is exactly what we've got here. We've got Nashville SEO. Um, Nashville Internet Marketing, you'll see is Nashville Internet Marketing here. We've got um, Internet Marketing Nashville, Graphics Designer Nashville, Graphics Designer Nashville. It just goes backwards across the page. All right, so... Again, again, keeping in mind, folks, I didn't really know what this site was for, what we were selling. I just randomly chose the keywords that were within a few percentage relationship with Nashville SEO and had anywhere from $4 to $25 per click on them and I just chose those SI landing pages, okay? Because, you know, we didn't have time to train you on how to connect to your product. Yeah, and we but have a lot really of people that are very excited about what they just saw. We're seeing a lot of a lot of wows and a lot of amazings and G's and crazy and, and uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think this stuff is is really, really cool. And it's you a lot of content. Good. You guys don't do drop downs because of the it kills the link juice a little bit, right? Exactly. It leads the page, you, right? Exactly. You don't you only want to see these um, the articles underneath the silos as you click into the silo itself. So you can see as I'm clicking down here through the uh, through the list, you'll see some of these we don't have. Let me just come back here and, and find something. So Web Design Nashville's got a couple of nodes underneath it. And if I find Web Design Nashville, then you've got a couple of nodes underneath that. So awesome. let's just let's come in here for a second and let's just go to search engine optimization Nashville here for a second. Um, view the articles, and let's just add a few more articles to this. I'm just going to give it the thumbs up here. There's a thumbs up icon. You might not be able to see it too well in the webinar, but I'm just saying, yeah, all of these articles look good. And, uh, and now that I've got five articles here under this, I'm going to go export this again. And um, save this link location. Uh, Justin, you can have drop downs, but there's a, there's a cost to it. So just make sure you know where the link flow is happening in your site. It's a little yeah, advanced. I, Don't yeah, worry too I wouldn't much. do it. And let's come back over here to the silo importer. And let's import this again. This was number two. And Sue, you can actually, you don't actually have to have these published right away. If they want to drip feed, they can publish exactly. those drafts. Awesome. Exactly. Somebody asked about the fear point on how many pages is too many pages. Uh, we've got it right at about 9,500. That's too many to roll out in one day. Yeah. We'll keep it under uh, keep it under ten thousand. All right, can, can everyone remember that? Uh, All right, so I want everyone to solemnly promise to to uh, publish less than ten thousand web pages per day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we we really again, this is some powerful stuff, and and hopefully this will give you an idea. Like, does it give me the number one if it makes sense that we really just put a lot of work? Obviously, this has been a very short webinar so far, um, we, but. 
hopefully you can kind of see where the work went into is really trying to um, to focus on just the right thing, just the right order again. This is now, and, and let me ask another question. Um, give me the number one if you'd like us to have Russell and Sue back for another webinar or, or if, if just one is enough. Okay, most people are saying one is enough. All right, guys, well, we, we no, I'm j joking. Everybody <laughs> wants you guys back. Are you, are, are, you also, are you able to see this? Yeah. Yes, we're watching. Yeah, okay, great. And you know what's so cool about this, Mike, because I've been, you know, preaching everyone, tell them, like, plan out your website ahead of time, especially the way SEO is going now. you got to plan out your website. Yep. This is, like, just, like, the perfect tool for doing that. Like, Dude, it kind of, it forces you to plan out your website, which is just awesome. Yeah. Yeah, can, um, can, can I get, like, like one of two things? Would you please type in, and I'll type this in as well. What Greg just said is just so critical. Would you either type out, plan out your website, or perfect tool, one of those two things? Plan out your website. I, I really want everyone to, to do that. And we don't say this because it's more work. We say it because it's less work. You know, we're trying to give you the shortcut to do, uh, uh, you know, we, we want you to have the, the, the perfect shortcut, the perfect tool, uh, because we want this to be better for you because me and Greg are greedy for earnings reports, okay? Um, <laughs> so you can type in, you can type in plan out your website, you can par type in perfect tool, or you can type out greedy, uh, for earnings reports, or you can type out all three. Let's see, let's see what, what, what's most popular here. Well, yeah. Hey, Mike, can I add something here that maybe, like Sue and I have thousands of domains that were unused because we know it took us about 25 to 100 dollars to create a silo structure, even on squatted domains that were waiting to be published for our outsourcing team. Uh huh. And with something like this, um, it takes like 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So. What happens is now that all those domains, we have somebody going back on our servers, our various servers of sites that are just sitting there collecting dust. Now we're using, we're frantically hand over fist adding these video silo sites based on the exact match domain, based on the top Kraken things. And Kraken's perfect for that as well, since we're not going to really plan the subject matter material with the subject matter expert or anything, right? So we can just literally mill out these blueprints, post them directly, and then the domain will squat and get indexed in a couple of days. And we come back in a few weeks, days, or even a year, and we've already, you know, you already find stuff ranked for silo stuff that's been sitting around, even though you haven't got tons of content, and then you're ready to use it. Might even have page rank in some cases. So that's kind of one use for this: is uh, resting domains that you haven't, you're not ready to publish with yet. Great. All right, and, and there's a uh, in terms of. Um, in terms of what we can use this for, there's a, there's a couple of angles that we can do. One is that we can use this. Um, we can use this for our feeder sites. Okay, for so we can. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, that's definitely true. Um, so we can use this for our feeder sites. If we have a PBM personal blog, uh, a private blog network, we can use it for those. And and we can also use it to silo out our, our money sites. Uh, you know, of course, if it's, if it's your money site, uh, then, then you might want to put a little bit more planning. Of course, you're going to put a little bit more content into it and. A, a little bit more TLC, but still, this is going to like zoom you ahead so fast. Um, so ho hopefully, people are starting to get it. We'll, again, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of keep working through this. Um, you know, if you're feeling con uh, the funny thing is, the more confused you feel, basically, the better it is for you because it means that you're covering a lot of ground very quickly. Um, that's funny. Jetta says, uh, "Release the Kraken." It's great. <laughs> that's, that was our original marketing campaign, so thank you. <laughs> uh, I would also add that one of the most common FA, would it be helpful? I don't know, Mike, you tell me. We have like two or three of the most common confusions. We've been teaching this for almost a decade now. And should I address one or two of those yeah. common confusions? Yeah. Okay. The two common confusions with website silo architecture, and this is why with Kraken and, silo, and, uh, and the Blueprint, we actually uh, distinguish between a theme, a niche, and a market. For example, that's really um, competing number of pages. So in Kraken automatically will tell you if a keyword is a market, a theme, a niche, or a micro niche. It just says, it, a giant word pops out and slaps you in the face and says, this is a micro niche. All right, this is a theme. We had to do that because the common experience, and, and Sue, you might be able to get into this, is that if you have something, when you have silo architecture, something with 100,000 or 500,000 pages is nothing. It's not even considered a challenge, right? Because you're setting the structure. So the common confusion is, how big should my silo be and how deep should I go? And I think, Sue, if you would address that issue, because this is a question I've seen it come by three times on the chat here. Uh -huh. um, you know, could you just, because you're the best at explaining this, I think it's really helpful for people when they hear you talk about that. Well, um, so how big should it be? The more competitive it is, 
the more pages you need on site, the more links you need off site. There's a, a relationship between your inbound links and the number of pages on site about a particular topic. So um, we actually have another tool that we've developed that we're going to demo in a, a later webinar that gives you an idea about how many on site pages you need. But for a beginning rule of thumb, especially if you're in a niche, each one of your silos ought to have at least five supporting pages. It takes um, five pages to really establish the theme on the site. So if you have, if you want to write about something on your site and you have problems coming up with five ideas to support that, then probably that idea that you want to put on your site doesn't actually belong as a silo. Or if you want it as a silo because it's important to your company, then you just have it that there is a page. And you maybe have one or two pages underneath it, but don't worry about trying to flesh it out into an entire silo. Precisely. But, yeah. Yeah. So, so that and and if you're talking about a really niche type term, then it'll probably rank just fine like that. Oh, totally. Um, if um, if you've got a little more competitive term, then you're going to want at least five pages underneath it. Exactly. Now, the interesting thing, if you already have an existing site, the interesting thing is that you can uh, you can create a little silo inside of your site. You can change around your linking structure so that your links all point to these other related pages, and you'll see a boost come out of that. So it, yep. that's one of the reasons why I, I went off and did these other two silos. If, if you, in your um, Olivia Wilde silo, you're pointing over to the diet that she's using, if you're pointing over to paleo diets because that's what it is that she's doing, you're bleeding your theme. I know it's related. She's doing a diet, and she's doing the paleo diet, but you're getting off topic. You're not talking about her anymore. If you want to talk about her and her paleo diet, then you create a page like Olivia Wilde's paleo diet or Olivia Wilde's diet, and then you talk about what it is that she's doing, and you leave it there in that silo. Precisely, and that's the same issue with geo-targeted domains. Some of you have asked questions. I've seen it pass by. It's the same thing. Like even if you have a keyword that, you know, somebody asked if you mentioned Nashville too much, too much in Mike's site, Nashville this and Nashville that, that just tells Google that it's local. That is that Nashville is the master um, theme, and you can even start at that point adding broad terms such as advertising or the rest, and it's automatically going to start associating things with Nashville because you're on topic because the overall conversation, it's like you're listening to a conversation happening in the room, and there's a bunch of people talking. All those pages are talking at once. Googlebots goes in and listens for the loudest shouts in that room, and if Nashville is the loudest, it's like those tags on blogs, right? If the loudest shouts or the biggest fonts is the word Nashville, guys, you don't need any superstitious magic to get ranked for Nashville this and Nashville that. Google already knows that. Now, if you add a site map and the rest, then you're going to be on steroids. And not only that, you only need about 90% of the inbound links of people who are not keeping their site themed by organizing in silos the way that Mike has organized Olivia Wilde and the way that we're organizing Nashville. Hopefully that makes sense. You talk about something the most, it's the loudest to, do, to Googlebot. That's the conversation that they hear in the crowded room. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so I've just kind of gone in and cleaned up Mike's site a little bit so that it has much more to do with Nashville SEO and not so much to do with some of those other crazy topics we were talking about. Nashville SEO diet. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Great, stop. I mean, these questions are so helpful, you guys. The more questions, the better. All right, yeah, and one of the things I can do is I can just publish this P this PDF and send it over hey to Hey, guys, you. I'm, on our, I'm on our website in real time, and there's so many people hitting the, the site that um, you're probably experiencing load times. Um, probably we should have got an extreme load balance or something because yeah, yeah it's okay. we probably shouldn't have put the videos on the page but that's no right. it's okay it's okay like everyone we'll, we'll, we'll just work it out no, no one's like everyone wants to get in on this I, th I think that everyone's going to join and we'll just we'll just take you know it'll just take a little bit of time and we won't maybe we won't even pull it down tonight but just just try to give people some time to to yeah. get in there all right go ahead okay so in the market analysis side of kraken you've got the ability to create what we call clusters and the idea behind a cluster is that it's like a market segment it's a way of looking at an idea it's a sandbox space so you might start a cluster just investigating I don't know Nashville SEO let's take a look at that for a second and you can drill a bunch of 
themes, and the reason we call them themes is because all of the keywords that get returned are going to be semantically related to the seed term that you use. So, um, of course, I picked a big one, and so it's going to take a minute to load, cause, especially because we're on a webinar. So, um, so there's a couple of numbers here. There's ORV and there's TSMV, and the ORV is the organic rank value. We take a look at all of the keywords that are contained within this cluster, and we look at what the search market value is, and we look at, um, in other words, we look at what the pay-per-click cost is, and we look at how many searches there are for each one of those keywords, and we come up with numbers. We, we assign a number that way, a value to each one of the keywords. So, um, so the ORV is the organic rank value with the idea that um, back a few years ago you could only rank for one or two positions, right? So we calculated what would, what, how much traffic you would get if you were in position number one and number two, looked at the amount of searches that you would get off of that traffic and how much that's worth in terms of pay-per-click with the idea that if you're willing to spend five bucks for a pay-per-click term, you've got to be making more than that five dollars on the sales that that come back in off of it. So, um, so then TSMV is the total search market value. In other words, we look also at the pay-per-click cost. So, because a lot of people do this, especially the big companies that are into branding, they have uh, a pay-per-click ad as well as having, um, as well as being ranked on the page organically. And so, the total search market value incorporates all of that into it. Dang, my computer seems to have just hung. Um, let me see real, if we can get into something else. Hang on a second. And real quick, so everyone's getting an error establishing database connection now for that page. Yeah, um, it was our, 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 our site, uh, uh. Mike, Mike, you guys crashed our site, so we're we have technicians <laughs> on it at the moment. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Which is um, surprising because it's fairly robust. So there's a ton of people on this call. I can see. Yeah. All right. So um. So I'll just look at a, a little smaller cluster. We've got one here for immune health. It's got two different drills in it, one for immune and one for immune health. It gives you, it rolls up um, the information here for each one of those themes. And you also get an idea by this line right here how competitive it is. The faster it drops off, um, the more you've got one competitor that's actually ranking for the majority of the terms. If it's a little bit slower, um, a less steep line, uh, then you've got a better distribution of those keywords amongst the competitors. So let's um, let's just go for the top of the vertical. I always like to drill into the top of the vertical just to follow the money and see where what aspects of the market have the most money behind them. So um, so when you look at that, this gives you an idea of the most important keywords within the immune market. And we look at that and we define important by um, the cost per click, by the number of searches, and then each line has got like different sizes in terms of competing pages because competing pages refer to the size of the conversation that's going on on the internet. Okay, so, so this kind of breaks out, gives you a visual overview of the most important ideas contained within this particular theme. And then we've got a list of keywords down here. And you can show all keywords, which these are, are like the most important keywords if you want to consider silos. And then if you want to look at um, keywords that have a little bit lesser value or a little bit fewer searches or they're possibly a little bit more tangent, then you can show all keywords and it'll bring you back a longer list, which is usually around 200 keywords. So on this front screen, you're going to get an average of 15 to 30 keywords. And then on the longer screen, you're going to get, obviously, a much longer list. Okay, so let's say that you've drilled into several things, and um, uh, there's there's a lot more that I could talk about. I mean, we, we do a whole hour and a half webinar just on what this tool will do. But just for quick and dirty, we come back to view the themes for this cluster, and, and you've decided that these two themes are themes that you want in your website. Well, you flip these to green, and then when you come over here to your blueprint area, you're going to have the ability to be able to select those and put them into a blueprint. So let's just create a blueprint really fast, and we're going to call it immune. And uh, one thing that I didn't point out before, we, we cover a whole bunch of um, different countries. We've got like 30 different countries that um, you can select. When you're creating your cluster, you can uh, 
you can select the, yeah. the country and the language. That was a common question flying by us. It was like, do we do multiple languages? And we do. I also want to add that what she was looking at there, full and um, outline. An outline is a less expensive. A full is full deep keywords. We pull back dozens of cost traffic and latent semantic indexing terms that have been specifically chosen for that master parent theme. So that's really yeah, nice. So so you'll get synonyms and you'll get supporting keywords when you do the full. And uh, with the outline, you just get the structure. You just get the major keywords. Okay, so so you can see here, this, like the reason why we flip the flags over here in Voma is so that you're not just completely inundated by everything that you've, you know, you gone down tangents and drilled into stuff and like, no, you're focused on just the things that you said you want to have in blueprints. And so you can pull in ideas from different clusters while you're here, but we were looking at immune, we'll just like, we'll just grab these two and throw them into, uh, into our. Yeah. The main thing here. is, mm -hmm. yeah, just try not to blow yourself up guys with this. <laughs> and then, uh, and, and then you and, have the opportunity to add articles. And, so if you have specific articles things. that you want to add. See, see there's just a couple of things I need uh -huh. to break in. Uh, now, number one, I got to tell you all, I, 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 I promise this is going to be an hour and a half webinar. We are at the hour and a half mark. Do you guys want us to just shut it down at this point? Or should we just keep going? Just, yeah, just probably we could, we'll have to do it again. There's, there's yeah, no we, way we can cover this. Yeah. <laughs> no, everyone. Okay, great. We got a lot of upset people. I'm just joking. We're not going to stop. It's okay. Oh, okay. Uh, right. sure no, I'm just, I'm just clearly kidding. Uh, <laughs> okay. Now, the, the other thing. You, Mike, I never know. Oh, no, that's I know. Um, I, I, I've got my good deadpan on. All right. Um, now, the other thing is that we have a lot of people saying, and this just has to be because we, we really we're just getting flooded um, with orders. There may have been some people who, once they ordered, uh, were having a little bit of problems with with actually like the thank you page and so forth if, if you have questions uh russell sh should they direct them to you or to me yes yes I'm email on the help desk you know okay, we have great. our help desk team working on it so that's going to be uh that, that's going to be um what, what's what's the uh, uh uh email address for you russell for them to contact um, why don't you, anybody with serious problems from this webinar tonight um just email me russell r-u-s-s-e-l-l -L. i'm going to drop it in chat okay at themezoom.com so Russell, yeah, at the, the problem a lot of people who bulk got is it seems the page you seek has been moved or become obsolete. So that's one of the most common problems people who bulk. Yeah, and, and again, I think that this is just happening. Like, like again, like shopping carts aren't really built to have hundreds of people descend on them at one at one time. Yeah. Especially if all of them buy it. <laughs> well, yeah, the big issue is we have hundreds of you hitting the same page at the same time. It's my fault. I take responsibility for it. I didn't believe my no. was going to be hundreds of people wouldn't have it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. Well, we, we we knew everyone was gonna be really excited about this. So that, but anyways, it's perfectly okay. Just so y'all know, we're we're you know, it's just gonna work out just great. Everyone's gonna get access. Uh, we uh, this next thing is so overwhelming. You're not even gonna be able to order it tonight. All you're gonna be able to do is sign up for a waiting list for for cracking the blueprints and so forth. So, uh, you know, we'll just it's it's but it's perfectly okay. This is one of the reasons why we're just gonna have. Uh, and, and does everyone like the idea of having Russell, Sue, Russell and Sue back again and again? Give me the number one if you like the idea of us, you know, ha having them be kind of recurring guests. If, if it feels like they, they kind of belong with, uh, with, with OMG and NHB. Russell, uh, Russell and Sue, are you seeing that warm welcome that you guys are getting? That's awesome. And, uh, Thank uh, you, guys. An hour and a half into the event. Um, oh, that's great. Uh, Brad Smith says this, this is so inspiring. That's great. That's great. And to, to give people an idea why I'm so excited about like them coming on with us, they're one of their strongest parts of SEO is actually one of my weakest. So I can't wait till we start getting into that stuff, you know, later on. Yeah, we're, this is this is really going to be a wonderful, wonderful uh, situation. And and just so you know, uh, uh, actually Russell lives in the same exact town uh, right outside of Nashville as me and David Mills. We're really, really close to each other. Yeah, yeah, I've known. There's, ser there's serious wickedness happening. Yeah, and, and and we're you know we're we're talking every day, and and you know Russell and I have known each other for years and years and years. So this is there's some very good stuff that, that's coming for you. Uh, I I didn't really want to say coming soon before the event began because the event itself is so exciting. But we really there's plenty to come, and we're so glad that you're involved with it. Um, you know I I don't know how else to put it other than to say it's all happening. All right, all right, I would so, also I would also add, I've had several people ask for the email again, uh, guys. I'm going to give it one more time because I will make I will not sleep tonight until every one of you have got your download downloadable plugin, and it's uh, Russell R U S S E L L at ThemeZoom T H E M E Z O O M and please include your name, the email that you purchased from, and Sue, does it, do they need anything else? 
No, but it's themezoom.com. I'm sorry, themezoom.com. I forgot the uh, extension there. And so that, you know, again, just uh, email me if you've had any uh, collapses on the server, and we will definitely yep. increase the bandwidth for the next webinar next week or whenever Mike wants it. Definitely. Okay. Mike, and uh, Russell has that email in the chat box for anyone that uh, – you, you only sent that to organizers and panelists, actually, Russell. Ah. Let me do that again. I'll give it to everyone. Sorry, guys. I, I just got it out. I just sent it out. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, thank okay, you. Great. Thank you. Okay. So, 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 we're, um, so, so let's continue with the, uh, the, the hijinks. All right. So you can add articles at this point if you want to. If you don't add articles, Kraken is going to figure them all out for you. That's the part that I just love about this. All right. So if you add articles, you hit the submit button. Otherwise, you return to the blueprint, and you just hit the drill, and you go to dinner. And when you come back, everything will be drilled out. You'll hit thumbs up on the things that you like. You export it. You import it to your blog, which we did a little while ago. And Bob's your uncle, as they say in Australia. Yep, and you have a lot of control. You don't have to choose articles that are not appealing to you. Uh, what Kraken is doing is it's pulling back based on co-occurrence. There's a lot of uh, discussion on co-occurrence. I'm not sure if Greg or Mike has talked to you about that before. But that's the hard algorithm that we have crazy, geeky, unbelievably strong mathematicians, including Sue, behind the scenes. She's regulating how they choose that stuff. And it just pulls out the, what Google views the most related words in the conversation. And it's really expensive uh, for us to do this. We have to go to, I'd say, thousands of web pages to pull the related terms. So for the articles each silo. That, yeah. yeah, for each silo. I mean, it, run, it runs for a couple hours, and you go to dinner, you come back, and options for you now, you have to confirm these, and you can drag them onto the tree by clicking the thumbs up button. Um, you can just so, show them, like, maybe one article, Sue. Like, let's say sure. you were... Let's say you're interested in Internet Marketing Nashville, which we looked at before. And, you know, let's go to Internet Marketing Nashville and go to the middle section. Um, yeah. Go back. I actually nice. want to drag an article. Okay, view articles. Um, yeah. yeah, let's go to the view articles section. If you go to the thumbs on the right, there's a thumbs up. Let's say I was talking to Mike and saying, hey, Mike, are you selling content marketing? Or are you selling um, some of the words are not useful that you see there? It will pull back some things based on co-occurrence that are not perfect. But are you interested in digital marketing or digital marketing Nashville? And if he says yes, then we give it a thumbs up, and it'll add it to your blueprint. Okay. Yeah. So these these items up here at the top are the ones that are part of your blueprint, and these are things that have been drilled and they're not yet part of your blueprint. Yeah. And these are additional suggestions that it makes that it didn't drill out, but right. it provides them in case you think you want them. And if you want them then you can just drill that out and add it to your blueprint. And it's another thing, too, that's fun. Like, you see Nashville TN up there. Like, how the heck did that come back in co-occurrence related? Well, you'll go out and you'll find that what Kraken has done is, like, a lot of the SEOs that are spamming geo-targeted directories are using Nashville TN. So there's always a reason. It's still a machine, right? So it's not 100%. It's not going to build the articles for you and determine the choices and the rest. And if you ever want to move something to another silo, you can always switch it back and forth. So you have a lot of control, but you have to understand, A, what is it you're selling and what's it for? And it's a great primer when you're not sure what the most – literally, you can view this as a money tree 100% because what we're doing is we're creating related knowledge on highest cost, highest machine-related words, highest traffic, and we're only hanging those on the tree. We're giving you the options to hang those dollar bills on this tree. And you know for a fact because of the technology being used that – all the most powerful t uh, keywords with the most profitable and highest traffic are clustered on the same kind of tree on the spine. At that point, you can elect to vote what something on or off the island based on whether you're selling it or not, right? Furthermore, you can just build secondary blogs where it might be just like page rank blogs or whatever you want to do. So those are the options within the service to automate it. It's automat automatically chosen for you. And, and Bradley's asking, is, uh, is, is this good for building local sites too? Yeah, you're seeing a local site being built right in front of you, which is Nashville SEO. It's also, of course, uh, you know, for, for uh, affiliate marketing terms, stuff like you've seen with KLKS, uh, Greg's e-cigarette site. Um, you know, so this is both for affiliate and for local. So this is both for uh, kind of day job killer, local client consulting. And, and this uh, Nashville SEO is I really intended it to be uh, kind of a hyper typical example of what you can do with um, you know, with this tool because uh, we're going into a lot of different verticals, a lot of different um, 
uh, profit centers with this. You know, if somebody's looking for an advertising agency in Nashville, that's 770 exact match searches. You know, at the beginning of this event, I showed you, um, I, I showed you uh, David Hood's incredible, uh, you know, testimonial update today. I'll, I'll, I'll read it to you again here for you really quickly. Started three times, uh, 1950 per month deal. So three $2,000 per month deals in the last four weeks. That's $6,000 a week. David Hood, by the way, already went from no income to $13,000 a month. So he's, he's skyrocketing. And the main thing he's doing is he's, he's in a large city in America and he ranks number one for SEO expert in that large city in America. So this is one of the great ways of getting uh, you know, local client consulting deals. But what I'm also doing here, and this is an important lesson, I want, you know, this is something we're branching out into as we're, as we're closing out 2013 and going into 2014. I want you to, you know, for you to understand, we're not just doing SEO, we're doing advertising. We, we have the option of doing web design for people. We have the option of doing uh, reputation management for people. This is all, um, you know, this is all out there. You know, the, the whole, the ball game is wide open for, for OMGers. So were you saying something? No, I'm just agreeing. It is completely wide open. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazingly, amazingly wide open. And, and when it comes to affiliate marketing, I mean, the sky's the limit. You know, so, so this, you know, really what we have here, this is such an exciting time. Give me the number one, if you, it, it, like if, if, if the whole stampede of elephants, uh, you know, the, the, the stampede in the room is starting to make sense to you here. You know, why, why this is. You know, not just not not just the you know the elephant in the room that that's hidden in plain sight, but but the whole the whole stampede of elephants is just they're, they're rumbling through. All right, great, great. I think I think people are starting to get that, which is which is wonderful. Hey, right. I want to give you guys a tip. Um, if you're gonna do a local website. Google doesn't give you a lot of information still about local keywords because there's not as much traffic on it, and so it's just it unless people are actually doing pay-per-click on a keyword, Google does not tend to track the search volume on it. Correct. So, and that's, mm -hmm. so when you go to do keyword research, you're just not going to find a lot of keywords other than the ones people are already bidding on. So right. what you want to do is do your research on a national level, leave out your local modifiers. So if instead of doing research on Nashville SEO, just do research on SEO. Find all the keywords that you want to use and then add your local modifier to that. Because exactly. you know if the if the traffic is good on a national level, it's going to be good on a local level. Right. So those of you asking a question. Sorry, sorry. I got excited. You know what happens when I get excited. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's one of the things I was talking to Mike about is that, again, you'll see some of those words on the decision tree don't have the word Nashville in them. But what you'd be doing is you'd be talking to a client or somebody else and you're saying, are digital advertising, does this qualify on your site if it's a primary site or a transaction site? And then you would add the word Nashville to it. Kraken's not really, Kraken's designed to swallow your market whole. That's our model. You'll see that under all our locals. Like that means everything, guys. Every possible conceivable long tail LSI or co-occurrence keyword in the universe, including exact match and instant Google search. All of those terms are swallowed in and only the ones that have real value are focused on. So we have other tools that Mike and every we'll, we'll be showing you over the next, you know, relationships. Uh, you'll see, uh, you know, other tools that we have for local that we also include that are not on here. But you can totally build a local site once you know the basic principles of how to use that geo-targeted location as a modifier. Exactly. All right. So I think that pretty well demonstrates everything that we wanted to show today.